welcome to part three of uh, let me say it again welcome to part four of my tutorial of my multi-part tutorial on how to use the program the editing program Adobe Premiere Pro CS3 the last three videos I explained how to do basic editing and add basic video transitions what I also explained what these boxes did and what the best preset was and I also have to start off this video by remember to press control S for every little thing that you do every like pretty much every little thing or every major thing because mine just crashed on me I'm not sure how it just did and I had to remake this whole thing good thing it wasn't a giant movie but you know if you're making some huge fancy edit uh, if you're making some huge fancy video be sure to save or it will crash so anyway this is this this particular video is going to explain how to render out for best quality how to render out your video and also how to add a watermark but first I gotta start off by saying that this little blue or white bar in some cases is the work area bar what you want to do is click one side and drag that to the beginning and click the other side and drag that to the end of your clip and you should do that at the and when at the end when you're done editing your video I will explain what exactly what that is a little bit later on so now I want to add my watermark first what I need to do is import my picture by dragging it onto the timeline grabbing the end of it and taking it to the end of the video now you think you're done right well you need to go to a mental hospital then okay that was a little bit mean but whatever <laughs> if you view through it's like wow it's in the middle of the screen that's a pretty bad video hold on let me uh, resize this probably should have done that before but whatever okay as you can see it's like pretty it looks like crap because it's right in, it's in it's in the middle of your video it's not a that's not a good video so what you want to do is make sure that you have it selected on your timeline click on it and then resize it a little bit make it make it noticeable but like not make it a little bit smaller especially if it says a whole website make sure it's pretty big so, but you can still see it and but right now it's still in the middle of my screen I don't want that so what I want to do is select it on my uh, timeline again and click on motion move it maybe to the side maybe up it's kind of it's kind it's kind of slow with the mouse wheel you know and then i can move around there when i when i make this motion come bigger and click on the and uh, like manipulate the position uh dimensions i can move around to the middle of the screen or to the side which it just will not go there we go it's over there now move that around and also it's you probably want to make yours transparent what you'd want to do is uh, open up the little opacity drop down menu and drag it down where it's noticeable but you don't want it completely transparent because it's just taking up space then but I mean make it kind of noticeable where you, people can still read it but it's not completely affecting the video and also you can change the scale if you want to make it really big or really small to change the scale width you have to click on it in this and then move it around there it's the only way and you can also rotate it if you want to I don't uh, let me control see that I just leave it like that but that's pretty much that's how you add a watermark you can put it in any corner that you want you can also just uh, drag it around on the video if you want to so I'm going to put it in this corner now when you are ready to render it make sure that your work area bar selects your entire uh, video and the cool thing about the work area bar is that you could drag all of this like to the middle of your timeline and then put your work area bar at the beginning of that and then at the end of it and when you render it if you select render work area it will render just the video the area that the work area bar is around it's a little bit confusing but it's pretty helpful so if I were to move this over here then I would set the work area bar to the start of my of that 
picture, then I set it to and start of the picture would be right there, and then I set it to the end of it, which would be over here. If I were to set it to that, and I sit, hit render work area, the only thing that would play back would be that logo, the video, and then just the logo. So, let's see, there we go. And so, I want to make this over my entire clip, and that should be good. Now, when you're ready to render, go to File, go to Export, and go all the way down to Adobe Media Encoder. This was something I missed, but just go to Adobe Media Encoder. It, Coder. It'll take a second or two to load up. Bad music, but whatever. And here it will tell you the source, the source tab where you can scrub through it, see what it looks like that way. And then you can also click on output and it will tell you, shows you a mini preview of what it'll look like when you output it, when you export, when you really export it. As you can see, the quality is significantly better during source and a little bit smoother but fuzzier during output, which is perfectly normal because that's what you have to expect. So, not sure what I did there. Okay. So what you want to do is make sure that the source says 640 by 480 and the output is 640 by 58. I'm not sure why it says that, but okay. But you want to be sure that it says 640 by 480. And if it doesn't, I'm going to tell you how to fix that right now. In the export settings on the right, you, if you have H.264, choose that. But I just have, I don't have it, so I have to choose QuickTime. My range would be work area. Entire sequence is your entire timeline. So just choose work area. Preset is custom. And then I want it to be export video and export audio. And when I come down here, I want to set video codec to H.264 from this huge list that appears. Then quality to 100. 640 by 480. Now for the frames per second, if you want a smaller file size, choose 30. For me, I just find it best to choose 60. So mine's going to be 60. For my field order will be none, progressive, and square pixels. And when I scroll down, I want it to be 1100 bitrate. You can make that uh, a little bit bigger if you want to. And you want to be sure to check set bitrate. You can probably make that 2000 if you want, but it, the higher it is, the bigger the file size will be. So now for audio, if you have MP3 around here, choose that. Mine is linear PCM, that's just what it is. Stereo, and then I just leave everything else the same. You c if you're uh, better with this kind of stuff, you can, move, uh, ugh, you can mess around with that. And once you make your preset, you want to click this little save right here, and then just set it there, you know make it YouTube and then when you make your preset it should appear here so I'm just going to choose YouTube preset and it's got everything for me already set and then I want to click OK and then name it and click OK uh, let me say it again and click save and this will be your basic rendering uh, actually this is not your basic this is your rendering status it tells you how much estimated time is left. That'll jump up and down randomly because it always does that. It tells you how many frames are left to write, and it tells you percentage up here. Now, once this is done, all you have to do is upload that to YouTube, and that's the pretty much the best quality too. So, thank you for watching my multi-part tutorial on how to use the software, the editing software, Adobe Premiere Pro CS3. I explained the basic of editing the preset, how to add a watermark, and what each window did, and how to render it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like them, and I hope they helped you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If I can't answer, here's a here here's a really cool little site, Google. Okay, try that before you ask people. Seriously. So that's thank you for watching. I guess I will see my subscribers and anyone who watches me next time.